Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habati fillah Fina al-astika al-hadith Kitab Allah wa khayran hadhi Hadhi Muhammadin Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam The best speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The divine book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Kalam Allah Wa khayran hadhi Hadhi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And the best guidance is that of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And so if we hold, if we stick to that, if we realize that, if we practice that, if we understand that, then all of our actions, when it comes to do with something with the religion, will be based upon that. It will be based upon the book and the sunnah. And it will be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we talked about countless times, the importance of sincerity to Allah azza wa jal, having ikhlas lillah, is the pillar of your deeds. It's the pillar of your good deeds. That you have to do things to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your worship has to be built upon sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that your worship needs to be built upon following the sunnah, the actions, the statements of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. And <clears throat> with that being the case, ahabat fillah, then... We have to realize, as I was just listening, someone sent me a refutation that someone made of someone else, which is unfortunately such a common occurrence, and we don't negate refutations at all. And of course, we, when we feel it's necessary, we involve ourselves in refutations as a part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And, but many of the refutations we see and that's not related to the English-speaking world. That's related to all the world. Uh, you know, we find this even amongst in the Arab speakers. I mean, I can give you countless people, students of knowledge, even major students of knowledge in the Arab-speaking world and so forth, who involve themselves in refutations. And sometimes their refutations are just simply based on batil and desires, hawa. So that right there in and of itself shows us that that is incorrect. Meaning that when you refute, it should be an act of worship, actually. A way of seeking to draw nearer to Allah Jal. That you find a reason to speak about someone and point out someone's mistakes. Lillah Azawajal. Because you're defending the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you're helping to protect the community from the battle and the falsehood that's being spread. Or... It is under the guise of commanding the good and forbidding the evil, which is a type of iman. It's a type of faith. How do we know that? How do we know that? Is this something I'm making up? Is this something that you find in the books of Jarwa Ta'deel? Or, you know, where is this coming from? This is coming from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, in the hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri, radiyallahu tal'anhu, in which he said, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yaqul, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, or saying, Men ra'a minkum munkarin fali yughayruhu biyad. Whoever sees a munkar, they see something haram, sinful, wicked, bid'ah, fali yughayruhu biyad. Then change it with your hands. Fa'in lam yastatih. And if you're unable to do, then change it with your tongue. And if you're unable to do that, meaning to speak out against it, then you hate it in your heart. And that's from the weakest form of iman. Letting us know all of that is from iman. And so if, so if it's from iman, that means when you engage in it, it's from the religion of, us, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that you need to be seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that reputation, not get further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to incur more sins, not to distort Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion or call to yourself or make yourself look bigger and better and whatever, but rather it should be to draw nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal, to help defend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen from the bid'ah, from the munkar, from the sinfulness that's being spread, from the da'wah of Ahl al-Batil, wa ilhad, wa kufr, wa shirk, wa zandaka. That, that should be the ghaya. And it should not be to lose the path or make others lose the path, which it looks like I've lost the path. But I will find my way out. I've been here for many years, been coming here. I think it's this way. We'll have to make our way. That you want to be on the Siratullahi al Mustaqim. You want to be on the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. You do not want to be a source of confusion and distortion and come a. a Yushiru ilayhi Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah in many places, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions that you do not want to be a source of producing a greater harm when you are commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Commanding the good and forbidding the evil should be exactly that. It should be to reduce the harm and bring about a greater maslaha or greater benefit. So that should be the intent. So it's important that you look at the masala and the mufasid of what you're doing. The harms and the benefits, weighing them out. And weighing them out based on a sharia based scale. You're looking at the good and you're looking at the harms of what you are speaking about. Is it going to bring about a good, a greater maslaha than a mafsada? And this is what we find that many people don't acknowledge or they don't look at at all. And they're unaware of, in fact. The reality is a lot of people call to many different things not based upon Islamic knowledge. They are not calling based upon ilm, wala fiqh, fi deen. But rather they are calling based upon their desires and their own limited understanding. As I have now limited my understanding of the trail and have totally gotten lost, although it's not a big place to get lost in, but you want to make sure you always find your way. And that comes by traversing the Sabila Mu'minin, the path of the believers, the way of goodness. So it's very important, the Habitifillah, that when we speak, we take time to reflect. We see how it is in accordance with that guidance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from being the best of speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and are we following the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam when we're speaking. That's very imperative for us to gain that, that insight and that understanding. We ask Allah the Almighty to bless us <coughs> to bless us with ikhlas <coughs> with thabat ala sunnah and may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala help us to be better slaves of his wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam <coughs>